I welcome from, you could say, the more traditional side of things, someone who has uh, done a traditional career path in engineering, studied process engineering, then he's led laser construction at the company Trumpf, and he oversaw uh, the development, construction, and production of Trumpf Japan for several years. Then he continued as managing director at several other companies in the industry before coming back to Trumpf, and so I'm very happy to have him on stage with me today, Dr. Engineer Heinz-Jürgen Prokop. Welcome. Hello, welcome. And for the software side, also someone with a lot of experience, more than 25 years in the industry, actually. And she's held a variety of management positions at Software AG, then moved on to, uh, to lead the German market entry for Cambridge Technology Partners, where she was uh, vice president for Central and Northern Europe for several years. And since 2002, she's a member of the board of GFT and COO in that role. And I'm very happy to welcome on stage Marika Lulai. Ah, you go here. Yes, we're just going <laughs> to switch sides. So I'm very happy to have you here. And um, first, I would be really interested to hear how did your collaboration actually start? Because you're coming th from those seemingly very different industries. How our career starts? Your collaboration together. Collaboration. How you started working together. <laughs> yes. Maybe first I have to explain that I am a mechanical engineer and software was uh, very strange to me. So when I came back to Trumpf three years ago, I got responsible for a very big software project. Um, we developed a new programming software for our machines. And um, yeah, that was one of the biggest uh, software project Trumpf ever made. So I met Marika because she was already a member of our steering committee. And that was uh, very lucky for me, because she explained me a lot about all these new expressions, abbreviations, and also a little bit the understanding. Maybe we come later back to that. So Marika, were you only teaching him, or was he also teaching you some things? <laughs> Yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. So uh, we had quite some uh, misunderstandings in language <laughs> um, and also a bit in uh, how such a project should be run because he thought that everything should be driven like engineers would drive things. And I tried to explain him that computer science is not engineering, although sometimes we call it like this. Um, but I was also learning something from the, from the machine and bow. I was simply impressed seeing the halls, the production, how clean it is, um, how actually the machine bow uses agile methods methods with standing up meetings in the morning to uh, run the production and ensure high quality. So I saw that a lot is actually similar, but as we talk such a different language and we have a different way of approaching things, we seem to not understand each other. But if you go to the true essence, you actually see the common approaches. Right. And of course, since that time when you did this first IT project, um, software has only become more important in uh, traditional machining companies. Mm -hmm. Why would you say has it become this important? Why is it such an essential part of the business nowadays? Of course, software development is uh, important since more than 50 years in uh, our business. Um, but we talk about different kind of software. So at the moment, um, we think more about IT before we had embedded software, we had programming software, and all the data we produced are used inside of the machine. Now we see that there is a very high value in this data if we take them out and look to find this value and to find new business models on this data. So you could maybe say what has changed is that the data is not just in the machine, but now we have more connected machines. Some people use the term industry 4.0, right? Mm -hmm. what, would you, what do you make of this, of this term? Is that what we have, industry 4.0? And what does it maybe mean for you as a software uh, company? Well, industry 4.0 is bridging the industries, is bridging traditional boundaries. So as Jürgen just explained, not only using the software to optimize the machine and make the machine function perfectly, uh, but actually that the machines talk to each other, even cross enterprises, allows, for example, Trumpf to offer new services to their customers, offers, enables their customers to offer new services to their customers. And that's what Industry 4.0 is all about. It's 
um, changing the traditional way from B to B, B to C into actually C to B. So the customer ultimately drives production. And that can only be done if the machines talk to each other, if data is exchanged cross boundaries. Um, and this is more than just having software to drive the machine in itself. So you maybe, maybe I can add <laughs> something, because um, it is predicted that Industry 4.0 will um, bring 30% uh, increase in productivity. And uh, at the beginning, everybody asked, uh, where can we find this, um, uh, yeah, this potential? And um, in between, so I got an expression which explains it very well, and this is uh, collaboration productivity. I think mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. uh, lose a lot of um, yeah, uh, productivity because information is not going directly. We have breaks in media, so data are going to paper, from paper to um, systems, um, from people to systems, and you can make mistakes. So if we connect all this and have directly uh, yeah, uh, transport of and correct transport of uh, tra uh, information, mm -hmm. then I believe we really have the chance to reach that. Yeah, and it actually will enable um, that we use the human interfaces in between to focus on high quality work mm -hmm. and not do stupid things of I take this data, plug into there, and actually then I make even a mistake and I have to redo it yeah. again. So it's about uh, seamless integration, it's about seamless connectivity, seamless collaboration, and actually upgrading the human interface mm -hmm. to do what we are best at, is, which is using our brain and using our creativity. Yeah. Essentially, so then you can make better decisions faster. Exactly, with the data exactly, that you have. exactly, exactly. Better decisions faster, you know, more appropriate to the t on the time, yes. Looking at it from a traditional machine uh, industry company's perspective, uh, wouldn't that mean that you would sell less machines then? That could be something that uh, someone might object to. Um. Yeah, of course, uh, if our machines are used in a better way, uh, then uh, you need in total less machines. Of course, we believe that uh, we are not comparable at the moment, so uh, we um, are mentioned as a technology leader and we see very high potential to increase our, um, yeah, our competitive uh, advantage um, more also in the hardware. But um, on the other hand, we have to develop new business models, um, and it may be that our profit will shift to new business models mm -hmm. and that the machine will get more and more a platform mm -hmm. on which this new mm -hmm. business can be created. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you differentiate very much nowadays with the hardware that you're producing. You have a differentiation to your competitors. Would software maybe become something that helps differentiate yes, machines yes, no from doubt. each other in the future? Yes, no doubt. I mean, besides that, software uses the machine maybe even more efficient and better. So in order to achieve the high efficiency, you already need software. But on top, if then the software connects better, faster, I mean, you, you can move data from A to B, but which data and how does it get interpreted? I mean, we, can ha we have a lot of data, but the question is who can read the data right, who can interpret the data right, and who can take the right decisions, the right analytics. And the company who does that the best, combined with hardware, simply leads on both fronts. So I think the question is not would I sell less machines, question is rather, if I don't do that, will I actually sell no machines anymore? Because yes. uh, this is simply, you know, not, you know, it will be taken over by the other competitors. So I think it's a, you have to do it, and you better do it very good and very right, because then you can lead, and then you're not just a follower. Continuing in the train of thought, where you two say that you're working very closely together, and software is becoming a more and more elementary part of machines, does that eventually lead to companies like yours merging? No, no, we are not merging. I mean, no, uh, I mean, you know, we stay separate. <laughs> so if someone was in that industry and was also producing machines, could it make sense for them to look for a software company to integrate? Oh, or, yeah. or do you think there is a good reason to keep those separate? Where do you think the, the industry as such is going? I think, actually, let me answer first. I do believe that every... Uh, leading industry technology, uh, let's say supplier, needs software competence in-house. 
uh, themselves, I mean, plus collaborating with third parties in order, you know, in a way of open innovation concept. But yes, definitely, each company should have their own software house inside uh, to drive that forward, um, plus collaboration. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, it's make no sense to develop all these solutions yeah. uh, ourselves. We are looking for partners. We are looking for companies. Of course, um, if we you work close together, it also makes sense to get a legally com uh, yeah, combination or um, we um, build it a joint venture in India uh, to get more capacity and skills um, and uh, this will be the way and the reason why we are here on uh, many people are asking why Trump is here on the Cebit uh, a machine tool manufacturer on the Cebit of course we on the one hand we want to understand this world we want to understand the people we want to talk to each other but on the other side we want also show that it's fun to work with us because um, maybe the, uh, our machines are getting more and more complex. It's a kind of ecosystem in between. We get more and more sensors, we get more and more actors and um, to understand this and find the unknown unknowns must be really exciting. Mm -hmm maybe more exciting than only work with a data server. And uh, we want to transport this idea and uh, we find a lot of response and uh, many people who are really interested in working on this new subject. And, and I think th this is really interesting because, I mean, um, as you know, uh, GFT, we started Corden. We were the initiator of this whole initiative and uh, we think it's actually a fantastic uh, success to have a company like Trump going to CBIT, which is an IT fair, and present themselves. And you could ask them, what do they present? Their machines? No, it's present Trump. Uh, you know, saying, yes, we, are, we, we know IT, we want to understand IT, we think IT is important, so probably also Trump wants to be seen as a bit cool, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, to attract uh, IT people, because that's obviously a different market. Um, but I think that, that shows the, that the industries are blended, you know, not the separation between IT and uh, machinery, mm -hmm. but it goes together. And therefore, we are also honestly very proud having Trump here as one of the traditional, very, very successful German companies showing, yes, IT will become a cornerstone of our success in the future. Mm -hmm. You are both touching on a very interesting point. You said machines are exciting. I definitely agree. But you also mentioned for software engineers, a traditional machining company it's not cool. might, not, <laughs> might not be cool. So <laughs> when you think about how people in software work and people work in um, developing machines, I would suspect that the, the innovation cycle for machines takes much, much longer mm. because you cannot just change something and try it out as you can with a web-based software, for example. So looking at it from this cultural perspective, the work culture, how do you bring software engineers and machine engineers together? Do you have to build a wall in between and just make a, a small hole through which they can shout? Or is there some <laughs> good way to get them to work together? That's a very good question. It and is. Um, it is. I think there are a lot of aspects um, to yeah, combine these two worlds. Um, but we see that there are also big chances. So we can learn a lot of each other. And uh, we have uh, really good first results. For example, up to now, we always we thought that hardware cannot develop it with agile methods. And um, now uh, we have very successful projects working like that. And I think we would not have reached that if we would not have this very close cooperation between software and hardware. And um, we're now looking for um, rhythms. Uh, of course, in, in the hardware, we are not as fast because if we have a mistake, for example, in a part, we have to design a new one, we have to order it, we have to wait two weeks until it comes. If you make a mistake in software, um, you can immediately um, change and um, there is, uh, you have to wait for nothing. There's no production in it. And, uh, and this also gives a stamp to our way of thinking, to our way of working. Um, but on the other hand, um, we have very good processes. And we see that the IT people coming to us now um, yeah, like those processes, because it helps them too. We not <laughs> There's a nice story. We had a software engineer um, who was um, employed by Apple 
some months ago. And she wrote a letter uh, to us and said, if some, someone, someone will criticize you um, that your work is not, your results are not good, then be sure you have at least very good processes. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, this seems that it's a little bit chaotic there and uh, that people don't always feel comfortable if it's chaotic. No, and, and I think it's, uh, it's what Jürgen said, that the rhythms are different. So you cannot change the rhythm of IT, you cannot change the rhythm yeah. of hardware, but you simply must find is how do they, when do they meet? And to develop the understanding and respect the differences and also see the advantages. And I remember, for example, when you say the culture and, and also how you do things is different. I remember we had one meeting when we reviewed the project and the project was already in its third year developing a very complex solution for machinery. And innocently, um, I said, well, that's already old code, so we must renovate that. And Jürgen simply got a heart attack that a three-year-old code, we call it you know, old-fashioned, old, and has to be <laughs> renovated. Because obviously, in the machinery business, you have much longer cycles. So, but as a matter of fact, code after three years is old, right? So, and that is something which, um, to, 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 that, to understand that on both sides, that is simply education and listening to each other and respecting each other and not believing mm. one is better than the other. So it's not without challenges, but it seems that you two have really found a great way of working together. And uh, what makes you maybe so, um, so sure that you're going to be successful working together in the next years as well? We think that uh, if we... Um if we succeed in combining these two worlds, and Trumpf has experience in that, with that, because I was with Trumpf uh, 30 years ago when we started with the laser technology, and that was a similar situation, because suddenly physicians came to us. And uh, so mechanical engineers and electrical engineers had to work together with physicians, and that was also such a, a very uh, yeah, um, different uh, approach. So we have been successful with that, and we are sure that we will also be successful um, with uh, combining the, with the IT world. We have um, made big steps. You see, I'm without necktie here, uh, and <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> so <laughs> It's actually more um, convenient, right? And maybe we have to, to create something uh, like uh, maybe casual formality, because without formality, it's also not good. And uh, uh, so, um, and the potential is clear. You see what uh, is happening every year here, and Code N, I think, is a, a very good platform which shows how much ideas we can create in the virtual world. And um, I actually, I mean, many people talk about that everything is driven by Silicon Valley, by the Americans, and all the innovations come from overseas. But I think this is industry for all is the ability, the chance for all the German manufacturers, because obviously there many German manufacturers are leading the world. And probably they have been skeptical for the past years, for the past decades, how to really use IT to, as a competitive advantage. They used IT as a, as a support, let's say, like, like more as a supply. But I think most of the manufacturers have now understood that IT can create the um, competitive uh, advantage. And there, the real revolution is, I think, driven by the German manufacturers. And they probably change from the inner side, just as you heard from, from Jürgen, the company is changing from the inside. And maybe it takes a bit longer, because again, we talk bigger companies and bigger processes and a lot of heritage, which has to be respected. But that change comes from, 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 from within the industry and drives it. And that is very, very powerful. So therefore, I have not only no doubt it will happen, I actually believe this is, will be very successful, and we will see a complete blend. And I think the traditional boundaries completely vanish. Those were some very nice closing words from you about the challenge that exists, but also how it is an opportunity for traditional machine manufacturers and how they can tackle it. And I think that you two gave a, 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 an amazing example of how this can work, that a software company and a machine industry company can work together successfully. Thank you so much for joining me on Thank stage. You very much. Okay. And I hope that some of the people will also come to you afterwards with questions if they like. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.